Good morning, everyone. We welcome all to the celebration of Mass here within our Kingston Channel Catholic Parish. We acknowledge and pay respect to the original and ongoing custodians of the land. We acknowledge the continuing connection to land, seas, air and waterways and commit ourselves to the ongoing journey of reconciliation. We honour elders, past and present. We do the Jesse tree first. Today, the symbol of the Jesse tree tells the story of God in the Old Testament, connecting the Advent season with the faithfulness of God across 4,000 years of history. King David. The crown symbolises David, son of Jesse, and an ancestor of Jesus. King David was a great poet and a person of deep yet flawed spirituality. He wrote beautiful psalms in praise of his God. Elijah, a prophet, a complex man of the desert who counseled kings. Isaiah, the beginning of the good news about Jesus Christ, Son of God, Isaiah wrote about John the Baptist. Behold, I am sending my messenger ahead of you. He will prepare your way. John the Baptist. John the Baptist was in the wilderness until the time of his public ministry. He came to announce Jesus as the Messiah. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. As we gather on this third Sunday of our Advent season, we light the third of the Advent candles. We have three candles, including the rose candle lit today. Let us pray. We humbly beg you, O Lord, to listen to our prayers 
and by the grace of your coming bring light into our darkened minds, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you. As we do each Sunday, we have the opportunity now to take just a moment to turn to somebody near us and ask that person to be our prayer partner for our Mass today. It's just a simple matter of sharing some particular prayer that or intention you would like to be remembered during our Mass and to then later in the prayers of intercession have the opportunity to pray for that need. So if you'd like to take a moment to find your prayer partner. have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who see how your people faithfully await the feast of the Lord's nativity, enable us, we pray, to attain the joys of so great a salvation and to celebrate them always with solemn worship and glad rejoicing. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. From the prophet Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord has been given to me, for the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the poor to bind up hearts that are broken, to proclaim liberty to captives, freedom to those in prison, to proclaim a year of favour from the Lord. I exult for joy in the Lord, my soul rejoices in my God, for he has clothed me in the garments of salvation. He has wrapped me in a cloak of integrity, like a bridegroom wearing his wreath, like a bride adorned in her jewels. For as the earth makes fresh things grow, as a garden makes seeds spring up, so will the Lord make both integrity and praise spring up in the sight of the nations. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My soul rejoices in my God. My soul rejoices in my God. My soul glorifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Saviour. He looks on his servant in her nothingness. Henceforth all ages will call me blessed. My soul rejoices in my God. The Almighty works marvels for me. Holy his name. His mercy is from age to age on those who fear him. My, my soul, soul rejoices, rejoices in my God. God. 
He fills the starving with good things, sends the rich away empty. He protects Israel, his servant, remembering his mercy. My soul rejoices in my God. From the first letter of St Paul to the Thessalonians. Be happy at all times, pray constantly, and for all things give thanks to God, because this is what God expects you to do in Christ Jesus. Never try to suppress the spirit or treat the gift of prophecy with contempt. Think before you do anything. Hold on to what is good and avoid every form of evil. May the God of peace make you perfect and holy. And may you all be kept safe and blameless, spirit, soul and body, for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. God has called you, and he will not fail you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <coughs> Hallelujah. 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 Is upon, upon me. me. He, he sent, sent me, me to, to bring, bring good, good news, news to, to the poor. Hallelujah. 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 The Lord be with you and with your spirit. From the Gospel according to John. A man came sent by God. His name was John. He came as a witness, as a witness to speak for the light, so that everyone might believe through him. He was not the light, only a witness to speak for the light. And this is how John appeared as a witness. When the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He not only declared, but declared quite openly, I am not the Christ. Well, then they asked him, Are you Elijah? I am not, he said. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. So they said to him, Who are you? We must take back an answer to those who sent us. What have you to say about yourself? So John said, I am, as Isaiah prophesied, a voice that cries in the wilderness, make a straight way for the Lord. Now these men had been sent by the Pharisees, and they put this question to him. Why are you baptizing if you are not the Christ and not Elijah and not the prophet? John replied, I baptize with water, but there stands among you unknown to you the one who is coming after me, and I am not fit to undo his sandal strap. This happened at Bethany on the far side of the Jordan, where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. This is the third week of this message series that we're preaching during the Advent season, why are we waiting? So I've mentioned before, this is frequently the language we use when we're sitting in an airport lounge, the plane has been cancelled and they're telling us there's a plane coming. And we wonder, why are we waiting? So if any of you are travelling over Christmas, I hope that doesn't happen to you. But we know it's more than that kind of frustration. There's something about waiting that is a part of our human experience and so during this Advent season, we've been looking at some of the ways as a Christian preparing for the Feast of Christmas, we might better prepare and better be aware of why we wait. We know that it's part of the story of Jesus' message. He said to us, 
Be on your guard, stay awake, because you never know when the time will come. We are waiting for something, something special. It's either the end, the resurrection for us, our death and resurrection, or it's the coming of our Saviour again. Whatever it is, it is important that we prepare. So I suggested that there were three things that we might do during this Advent season. The first was to take time each day to read the scriptures and to reflect, to be still in the presence of God. We had the uh, Advent booklet from Wollongong Diocese, the sign that was a, a way in which we could use and do as part of that story. I also suggested that we might join a small group during Advent to share our faith journey with others who are similarly preparing for the coming of the Christ. And the third was to be uh, attend our uh, ceremony last Wednesday evening, our reconciliation ceremony at Christ the Priest. Now, obviously, the second and third of those suggestions aren't necessarily uh, available to us at this time. But I'd like to just remind you that each Saturday evening from 5 p.m., I'm available to celebrate the Sacrament of Reconciliation, but I'm also available if anyone wants to ring and make an appointment. So there is the opportunity to celebrate reconciliation beyond just the Advent and Lenten reconciliation ceremonies, both weekly and when people make an appointment. But the other thing about our preparing by prayer and by scripture reading, that's an important part of the life of each of us as a Christian people. We can only begin to know God and his love for us by being with him, just as the same as we only can grow in love with another person by spending time with them and getting to know them. We can't fall in love with somebody we've never met. We can like them and we can have a fascination with them, but we can't love them. To love somebody, we need to spend time with them. And the more time we spend, the greater the possibility of that love growing and developing. That's part of our journey as a Christ follower. It needs to be something that we constantly work at. In the days when I used to celebrate or witness weddings quite frequently, I used to say to couples that if you said, I love you on the day of your marriage and that was the last time you said it, then expect to have a short marriage. It has to be something that is said every day and lived every day. Just the same as if I said yes to my priesthood 48 years ago and hadn't said yes every day since, then I would be a shadow of what a priest is about. So saying yes and living it is an important part of that relationship. Last weekend we heard uh, St Peter in his letter, second letter telling us something else we might consider doing and how we might do it. He said, do your best to live lives without spot or stain so that God will find you at peace. And that's another part of the story, to live a life that is worthy of being a Christ follower. Now, none of us is going to get it right all the time, and that's part of our human condition. It's why we have the Sacrament of Reconciliation. It's why we have the Eucharist. They are reminders to us of God's healing love, and that's the opportunity to start every day. Peter, in his letter, went on to say that the reason we are, we are waiting is that God has promised the new heaven and the new earth the place where righteousness will be at home. Now that might not be the language we would use to describe what we're waiting for, but it tells us that the coming of the kingdom is part of the hope and dream of every Christ follower. And it's something that as we live and as we grow becomes part of our story as well, so that it is much greater than just simply something I might do or something I might consider. God's righteousness and love will touch my heart when I turn towards him. Our first reading today is again from the prophet Isaiah, as it has been over the last two weekends. The passage we heard today is something which Jesus will actually repeat almost verbatim as he begins his ministry, but he recognises what Isaiah was saying as being a sign of what being a Christ follower is about. Isaiah tells us, the Spirit of the Lord has been given to me, for the Lord has anointed me. 
But he then goes on and prophesies that the Lord makes both integrity and praise spring up. Integrity and praise, faithfulness and rejoicing. And today, as we celebrate Gaudate Sunday, it's the Sunday of joy. That when we are filled with God's love, then we will praise him and we will rejoice in his presence and we will be people of integrity because God is with us. I've mentioned many times that I enjoy the prophet Isaiah. I enjoy his language. I enjoy the imagery he evokes. But it's always about how God cares for his people. It is about how God gives of himself for us. And Isaiah is there telling us the story of who Jesus will be, both the one who is to come to announce the good news, but also, as we will see during the, month, during the season of Lent, the one who comes to suffer, to die for us. So the words of the prophet Isaiah, if you ever want to just sit and read something that really gives you hope and gives you life, then Isaiah is where you might like to spend a bit of time in the Old Testament. Last week we heard how John came amongst us. And today John's pro the prologue of John's Gospel tells us quite precisely. Do you want to know what John's about? He is a witness. A witness in order to speak for the light so that everyone might believe in him. If you ever wanted a mission statement, that's a very clear mission statement. This is his role. This is his job. This is what he's meant to do, to witness to the light. Last week we heard John tell the people very clearly, I'm not the one. Someone is following me. Someone is coming more powerful than I am and I'm not fit to kneel down to undo the straps of his sandals. Just imagine that imagery for a second. You are a prominent person, but you're not fit to kneel down and undo somebody's shoes. And that was the lowest of the low. And John says, I'm below that. So he recognised who he was. He was just the voice in the wilderness, prepare a way for the Lord. So he's making a statement. Sadly, and this is perhaps a little bit out of context, but if you read the next section of John's Gospel, it tells us that John is still by the Jordan River, and it says, the next day, seeing Jesus comes towards him, John then says to those who are there, look, there is the Lamb of God. So he says today, there's somebody coming after me. The next day he is able to point and say, there is the one I'm talking about. But probably the people who needed to hear it had already left because we heard today how there were the scribes and the Pharisees and their, their associates who were saying to him, who are you? We've got to take back an answer to those who sent us. We can't just go back and say he's not the one. If we do that, they're likely to take our heads off because we haven't fulfilled our job. So John says, I'm not the one, but the day after he's able to say, but there he is. I wonder whether we are ready to make that statement about how we see Jesus working in our life and in our world today. Are we able to say we know where Jesus is in our story? Or are we still looking out there? Are we able to see Jesus in this community? Are we able to see Jesus in the Eucharist? Are we able to see Jesus here in the Word of God? Our God is with us. Our God is living in this community. Our God is living with us in Eucharist. God is present amongst us and he wants us to know what we are about. Just as Peter gave some encouragement to people last weekend in his, the second reading, today Paul in the letter to the Thessalonians is also giving people encouragement and support. He tells them what they should do. He says, be happy at all times, pray constantly, and for all things, give thanks to God. But then he warns them, there are a couple of things you have to avoid. He says, never try to suppress the spirit or treat the gift of prophecy with contempt. And then he makes a challenge that I suspect most of us will struggle with. Think 
before you do anything. Most of us think just after we've done it. Think before you do anything. Think about what does this mean about my love of God and my love of neighbour? What does this action say about my response to Christ's call to be a sign of love and peace? So today as we enter into this final week of Advent, that's because next Sunday, the fourth Sunday of Advent, is Christmas Eve, so we don't have a fourth week of Advent this year. So this is our final week. It gives us an opportunity to think again, what do I need to do to be still before God in order to spend time in preparation for his coming? What steps will I take? Not ideas or thoughts. What definite steps will I take to say that this week, this is what I'm going to do? Every one of us knows that this week is likely to be extremely busy and extremely confusing unless we make time. What can we do that helps us make time to be able to be ready for next weekend? There's a, um, a line in a song by Barbara Streisand. I've heard it and I can't find what the song is, so I just repeat the bit I know. Barbara Streisand has in the song, she says, I would like to be the third fiddle on the way up rather than the second fiddle on the way down. She's saying, growing in our relationships and developing and being better and improving is always what the Christ follower is meant to be. So sometimes if it seems, if I'm saying to you, you're not doing enough or you've got to do more, that's not what I'm saying. I'm inviting you to be a third fiddle on the way up, to recognise that we are never going to be in the spot where we need to be to be faithful followers of Christ without taking each day a new decision to grow and to develop as God wants us to be. We know that God has been generous to us in so many wonderful ways. Our response as Christ followers is to be generous and gracious to others in response to his love for us. Together let us make our profession of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. My friends, Paul urges us to pray constantly and for all things. And to give thanks to God, heeding this advice, we now bring our prayers to the Lord for our needs and those of our world. For Pope Francis and the leaders of the church. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in our world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For families separated by the pain of misunderstandings or distance. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all struggling with financial pressure. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for the sick and for those who care for them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For our deceased family members, relatives, friends and fellow parishioners, especially Peter Dowd, Margot Nielsen, Patricia Meehan, Jenny Gregg, Roger Riley, Peter McFarlane and all whose anniversaries we remember. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, our prayer. hear our prayer. For the special needs of our community. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the intentions of our prayer partner. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray together the Synod prayer. We stand, we stand before, before you, Holy Spirit, Spirit as we gather together, together in your name. With you alone to guide us, make, make yourself, yourself at home in our hearts. Teach, teach us the way we must go and how we are to pursue it. We are, we are weak and sinful. Do not let us promote disorder. Do not, do not let ignorance lead us down the wrong path nor no partiality influence our actions. Let us find in you our unity so that we may journey together to eternal life and not stray from the way of truth and what is right. All this we ask of you, who are at work in every place and time, in the communion of the Father and the Son, forever and ever. Amen. Like a shepherd, he feeds his flock and gathers the lambs in his arms, holding them carefully close to his heart, leading them home. Say cities of Judah, prepare the way of the Lord, go to the mountain top, lift your voice, Jerusalem, here is your God, like a shepherd he feeds his flock and gathers the lambs in his arms, holding them carefully close to his heart, leading them home. Thank you. I myself will shepherd them have led them astray. The lost I will rescue and heal their wounds and pasture them, giving them rest. Like a shepherd, he feeds his flock and gathers the lambs in his arms, holding them carefully close to his heart, leading them home. Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May the sacrifice of our worship, Lord, we pray, be offered to you unceasingly to complete what was begun in sacred mystery and powerfully accomplish for us 
your saving work. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ your Son. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that we may find, he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in the Holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, Julian our Bishop, and all those who are called to your service. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy.
welcome them into the light of your face. And have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed Apostles, St. Aloysius, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 Now, my friends, at the Saviour's command and formed by a divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, Father, who who art in heaven, hallowed be thy thy name. name. Thy Thy kingdom kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give Give us this day our daily bread, and and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses, as we forgive forgive those who trespass trespass against us. And and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer those near us a sign of that peace. Peace be with you, Gloria. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away sins of all the world. Miserere nobis, bread of life, you take away the sins of all. of all the world. Dona nobis pacem. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of all the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under under my roof, but but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. We implore your mercy, Lord, that this divine sustenance may cleanse us of our faults and prepare us for the coming feasts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. As I mentioned in the homily, next Sunday is the fourth Sunday of Advent and we will have Masses as normal and then we invite you to be back here the next day for Christmas Day. So next Sunday Mass is at 8.30 and on Monday Mass is at 8.30 as well. If anyone still has any donations that they'd like to make to the Vinnie's Appeal, please feel free to do so. There are still envelopes in the, on the table at the uh, entrance to the church. There's also a little uh, flyer which just gives you a whole lot of information about events that are coming up over the next few weeks in our parish and into February. So if you'd like to take one of those and uh, make use of that, um, put it onto your fridge or in your calendar, that would be helpful when things come up, things happen. No, it doesn't matter. Uh, there was, a, was a, The other thing I'm supposed to announce today is the fact that there is a nativity um, preparation for children um, next Friday morning. Um, so unless somebody would like to become childlike and join in the nativity, um, the announcement is made, but we'll see how we go. Have a great week. Have a great day. Please stay safe. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go now in the peace of Christ to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. We are one in the Spirit, we are one in the Lord. We are one in the Spirit, we are one in the Lord. And we pray that all unity may one may be restored. And they'll know we are Christians and our love by our love. And they'll know we are Christians by our love. We will walk with each other, we will walk hand in hand. We will walk with each other, we will walk hand in hand. And together we'll spread the news that God is in our land. And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. We will work with each other, we will work side by side. We will work with each other, we will work side by side. And we'll guard each one's dignity and save each one's pride. And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. All praise to the Father from whom all things come, and all praise to Christ Jesus, His only Son, and all praise to the Spirit who makes us one, and they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love, yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love.